there. So welcome tonight to everybody. This is awesome to see so many people on and I know a lot of people can't make it. So it's great that we've got a recording to share with everyone. And a huge welcome to Craig Schultz, our amazing Diamond Director here in Australia. So we're, real, we're very privileged to have you on tonight to give us a bit of a, a strategy session to end our year with a with an explosion but kickstart our year on fire and, and determined. And so I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Craig, and um, um, it's all yours. Beautiful. And uh, very excited to be on the call tonight. And uh, look, I... I was in, I've been in Adelaide a few times over the last uh, six to eight weeks and having a good chat with Jacinta and Joe and all the leaders and, you know, everyone that's uh, really been kicking goals in 2016 and uh, Jacinta just said, would you be open to doing a, a bit of a training? And uh, I did a, uh, I did do a, a, a session for all the Melbourne leaders here a couple of weeks ago and that's probably what sparked uh, this call or me being a guest on the call I think you're probably doing the calls already um, but uh, yeah look I'm excited to uh, go over what um, I shared with the other leaders and I didn't just share it to the Melbourne group um, it's been a training that I've done for a while now and I sort of just refined it and revisited it uh, on my tour of Africa so I, when I went to Africa, I um, did a session called What You Need to Do and What You Need to Know, um, which I also did in the Philippines last week as well and did it with a Melbourne group. And, you know, I, I thought, hey, look, this here is a bit of a, a graph or a matrix of that really does plan out the skill sets and the targets required to have success in this industry. It's not foolproof because you may be the lucky person that strikes the, you know, the customer who enrolls the next, you know, Jacinta Carr or Joe Pedler or Aaron Biley, but, you know, it's giving you a bit of a guide and a framework to work towards sort of very similar to a job description. So if you went and applied for a job, um, very important, you're giving criteria and things that you will be doing as a part of that job. Um, and also, um, you know, if you went into the interview, you're going to get asked questions. How good are you at this? Can you do this activity? Um, because this is mandatory if you want to have success in in the industry. So I sort of put together a bit of a, a, a plan of what I call what you need to do and what you need to know if you want to earn at the level of Sapphire Elite, at the director level and above, and the diamond director level and above. And it's really important to understand um, I guess Sapphire is a really important part of our business platform or well, executives an important part because executive um, as a distributor, what you've done is basically be able to present an opportunity to someone that they join. And also if you've created an executive, you've actually been able to show someone that process as well. So some form of duplication. Now, the qualification of Sapphire is you've proven that it's not a fluke because you've had to do it at least 12 times. So we call that our first major leadership level because you can enrol your way to Jade and Pearl, but you have to actually duplicate your way to Sapphire. So ultimately, what you're trying to achieve is create a pipeline of people that can create executives that hopefully turn into jades, that hopefully turn into pearls, that hopefully turn into sapphires. So if you create on, you create that as a culture and keep it simple like that and you can get people beyond executive to jade and beyond jade to pearl and beyond pearl to sapphire, you're doing all the right behaviours. It's just a matter of finding more people. So often I say when you're launching your business, 
it's really important that you don't say to someone, oh, your first mission is to get Sapphire. And what they'll, you know, human behaviour is, is they'll go, oh, I need 12 to get two. And what do they do? They enrol 12 people and hope to, and two come out of each. And then they think that's my team and the rest is history. So what we're really trying to do is set the bar beyond that. So straight away is your first mission is to shoot for 30 enrolments as quick as you can. So we're trying to create enrolment culture. And the reason we try and do that is because the compensation plan dictates um, best rewards for enrolment. So in the matching bonus, if you enroll someone, you know, you can get a 30% matching bonus on their business. So Lyndon would rather be my sponsor than me just sitting in his genealogy helping create volume because I'm helpful doing that, <laughs> but I'm highly lucrative from being sponsored by Lynn, you know, like Lyndon being you know, my sponsor. Again, um, you can put money in people's pocket quickly if they create a habit of enrolment culture. And it's just, it's just a really important behaviour to have. So I always say when we're launching someone's business, I say your mission is to shoot for 30 enrolments. And I use that as a bit of a qualifier. So some people say, Craig, um, you know, I want to earn full-time income. I want to do it in my first 12 months. Um, I can put 10 to 15 hours a week in. I'm prepared to do all the training. I'm prepared to turn up to all the events. You know, one of the qualifying questions is, I, say, I always say, based on your network in your warm market, do you believe that you can enrol 30 people? And if they sort of get a bit overwhelmed by that, I sort of know that, okay, we need to scale it back. I can help you achieve that full-time income that you're desiring, but, you know, is two years a more realistic goal? Is 18 months a more realistic goal? And if they said to me, look, I literally only have five hours a week, I say, I can help you earn full-time income, but do you think not one year but two years is a realistic goal? Because, you know, I, I always say one year for full-time income, for most people's war market, you really need to be act actively building the business 15 hours a week consistently. And uh, again, some people will do it in six weeks, some people will do it in six years. It's not a foolproof, hey, I've worked 15 hours a week for 12 months, how come <laughs> I'm not earning full-time income yet? But it's giving you a bit of a guide of what's real and realistic. So this session here is probably next level. Um, people beyond Sapphire. So what you need to be thinking about, um, so I'm specifically talking about Sapphire Elite, uh, director levels and diamond director and above. So we've got our full-time income, our life-changing income and our, our stupid rock star income. So I put together this here and we'll see how it shows up. You won't need to study it heaps other than get the idea of what I'm doing here. So... I've put together basically a simple graph and this axis here is knowledge and we're scaling up from zero to 10. This axis here is effort, action, desire, scaling up from zero to 10. So we're looking at windows of opportunity of success so you can see there's five and five. So Sapphire Elite, I wanna, I'm gonna go and talk through these zones, but I want you to visually understand, you know, why, um, you know, I'm trying to get your um, knowledge, effort, action, desire to be as big as possible. So if I said your knowledge is one to five and your effort, action, desire was one to five, you've given yourself the opportunity to earn full-time income. If I can increase your knowledge up to say seven and eight, increase your effort and action desire up to seven or eight, you can see that that window of opportunity to earn income is greater. And obviously 10 out of 10, the window opens up. The reason I 
take people through this because it really visually, some people need to see things visually, get a real good understanding of income opportunity. So this is a window of income opportunity. It doesn't mean much other than, you know, if you increase your skills, efforts, action, desire and what you know, your window becomes bigger. So sometimes you have situations where they might be a one on effort, action, desire, but they might be a 10 on knowledge. Their window of opportunity is a thin line that way. Then you get situations where people literally know nothing. So they might be a one out of 10 in knowledge. They might just simply be able to say that Jeunesse is network marketing and got good products. So they're a one, but their effort, action, desire, they just talk to every single person. So their window dimensions change as well. So what I'm, my goal is, and everyone on this call, have zero excuse to be at least a five out of 10 in knowledge and a five out of 10 in effort, action, desire. Because one of the tasks that, you know, you're taking time out of your life, whether it's a Christmas party or whatever, is to be on calls like this. What I ideally like to do is get people up to seven or an eight out of 10. Now, seven and an eight out of 10 are skills that you will use for life, whether you're in Jeunesse, whether you are moved into new careers or whatever, it's all around personal development and mindset. So Jeunesse experts are five. To be an eight, you've just started you know, doing higher level of information to get to a 10 basically your, you know, network marketing off the back of your hand, you can recite nearly every company's comp plans, you know, company sales figures, you know, you're just, you know, a walking, talking network marketing genius. So we're going to talk about this matrix now on effort, action, desire and knowledge and what at an absolute worst case scenario, if you want to be a Sapphire Elite, you need to be able to get yourself as at least a five out of 10 on both of these scales. It's as job description based. If you're not prepared to do the effort, action, desires, revisit your financial goals. If you're not prepared to get yourself to a five in knowledge, revisit your goals. But ultimately, just imagine that you are a Jeunesse expert and you're a 10 out of 10 out of effort, action, desire, you had zero interest in personal development, growth, whatever, 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 your window still opens up quite significantly, all right? So that's just giving you a bit of a graphical idea of what we want to achieve. And um, we'll start with the, f the first window of opportunity, which is Sapphire Elite. So for someone that says to me, Craig, I want to be earning that full-time income, I say, so you're talking about that Sapphire Elite Zone now. 100 cycles is 3500 US dollars a month. To be, get to 100 cycles, you need to have got leaders that you're getting matching bonuses on and you're bringing you one to two to three people on a month yourself. You're, you know, you should be earning at least five thousand dollars a month minimum if you're qualified Sapphire Elite. Okay, so for that for that conversation, I'm I'm talking to that person. I'm saying if you want to earn that sort of income at that level, I can help you do that. Do you think eighty personally enrolled is out of question? based on your network that you currently know today. Because this is sort of job interview-ish in a way because you've got to manage expectations. If you want to be a good leader in this industry, it's all about managing expectations. It's where a lot of people go wrong in the industry because they say, hey, Jacinta, you're a dynamic uh, female who's worked in the airline industry and you're really hungry and passionate and you've had your own business. All you need to do is join Jeunesse and you're going to make all this money. And the fundamental flaw is, you know, Jacinta joins on that um, concept and doesn't follow through with the actions, efforts, desires to do that, doesn't make any money, is disappointed and leaves the industry. So that's 
the rookie way to go about um, building a business. The real true way is treating it like a business and managing expectations. So if someone said to me, Craig, I just, you know, I just don't know enough people to enroll 80, I said, that's okay. One of your missions is that we have to go and find new people. So we're going to have to put that into our time schedule is to find new people. For someone like myself, 80 wasn't too bad because I'd, uh, I'd been to university, I grew up in Tassie, I'd played sport, I'd had businesses, I'd personal trained a lot of people. So 80 people for me, I didn't really need to go out and find new people. But the most important thing is I was seen beyond Sapphire Elite so I was looking for new people from day one anyway. So importantly, everyone on this call, always look for new people. I'm always looking for new people. So, um, and if someone's coming into the business and they say they want to be earning full-time income and above, I say day one, you're looking for new people because otherwise you'll get through your war market, you'll hit and it will hit like a thud and then you won't be able to enrol anyone. You'll need to have these new skills to go out and find new people and you've, you've sort of six to nine months into the journey and you've, uh, you know, you, you've slowed your business down to a snail pace because of it. So from day one, if someone says full-time income, I say find new people, all right? So we're looking for... Leaders wise, so there's enrollment of 80, but all we're looking for out of that 80 is two to four people that are doing Sapphire Elite behaviors. So we're going to talk about efforts, action, desire in a minute as a part of this matrix, and we're looking for two to four people. If you don't look through your genealogy and have two to four people that are doing the effort, actions, desires that I'm just about to talk about, your next mission is to enrol more people. So it might be find new people and enrol new people. So your time management needs to change from, you know, for someone like me, I might be 70% helping everyone and 30% on my own business. When you're new, it should be 80% all new people, 20% helping the people that meet that criteria, that qualify for your time. It's not every enrolment. Um, I learned that lesson in my first go in this industry. I thought my first six people I spent six uh, equal amounts of time with. Lesson learned. I only had one person working the business and I was hounding the five that had zero interest. So, you know, that's a, an important lesson. Work with those people that are engaged and qualifying. Qualifying is everything. Qualifying means that they are turning up to events. They are consistently enrolling. They are consistently getting people on three-way calls. They are doing all the right one percenters or behaviours or whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, they're the people that you factor into your time management system. Um, 10 to 15 hours a week. So at this level here, um, if you've got a full-time job or a business or a busy family life or whatever, if you want to earn Sapphire Elite income inside of 12 months, it's 10 to 15 hours a week. It's okay if you don't do that. Just, again, revisit the time that you're putting into the business. And 10 to 15 hours a week isn't leaving your computer open with Facebook on either. It's, it's doing behaviours like calls, trainings, launch parties. You know, it's, it's activities that produce a result. So whatever that may be. In some instances, it might be, you know, that personal development stuff. So for me, when I exercise, I try and learn. That's how I learn. Um, you know, I'll try and learn while I'm driving from A to B. Um, but, uh, you know, I try and make that in time. I'm either calling people while I'm driving or I'm trying to learn. Um, when I'm exercising, I don't want to be calling people, so I'm trying to learn. So it's, a, it's about fitting things in around 
life that makes things work. Um, events, if you've got the Sapphire Elite uh, vision and mindset, etc., cetera, um, your mandatory events are the university, the conference, uh, and the international convention. So if someone's talking to me about becoming a Sapphire Elite type of uh, leader, and they're t not turning up to the national convention, the international convention, they're not qualifying for Noosa. Hey, that's okay. We just need to revisit your goals and where, where it is that you want to be so we can work together. So everything's always, it's okay. <laughs> we just need to revisit um, because you don't want to, you know, offend someone by saying, oh, well, you're never going to get there then because that's just not going to work. You just simply say, hey, that's okay. Um, we just need to revisit, you know, just to manage your expectations is two years okay for your time frame. You know, so it's all about reassessing and assessing where people are at based on how you work with people. Um, in regards to skills, you need to be able to tell your story that is at a level that people will join you because of it, you know, because people join people in this industry. And if, you know, we try and get people to tell a two minute testimony at an event, but that's one skill you've got to develop. But the other one is be able to tell your entire story. So you can sit down and meet someone face to face and say, Hey, understand totally um, where you're at at the moment. You know, I was there too. I was once an engineer and I hated working in the corporate world. I hated the concept of nine to five. So I went out to follow my passions and that was a personal trainer, blah, blah, blah. And I tell my story where people go, wow, this guy is, you know, an impressive person. So, you know, go on, if you, if you don't feel that your story is something that will attract people, we'll go and rehearse it with a, an upline leader, you know, someone that you work with, someone that can say, hey, I know you, you should actually say this, this, this and this and that will attract people, you know, so... Um, that's a skill if you want to uh, become that Sapphire Elite type of income earner and you can't tell your story, that's, and, and you would say, hey, I'm across there, that's one of those criterias that you have to make a tick. Um, another one is you can present the Jeunesse story. So you can tell it right back from how, you know, Randy launched, um, you know, worked uh, in the computer engineering world right until where we are today. Because, you know, <clears throat> again, it's not what you say sometimes, it's how you say it. But if you can recite that story, you, you're going to have a skill that's going to help convert you know, the, all the skills that I'm talking about here are going to help you convert prospects. Um, so, you know, people are going to assess this business opportunity like they'd assess buying a house, like they'd assess buying a franchise, like they'd assess buying a share. They're going to assess it based on the owners, based on the financial position of the company, based on the product relevance based on the uniqueness of the product, based on the returns of if you put in effort in, what type of money is possible um, and uh, how far does this product go to? So their global platform, you know, we have a very, very, very good story to tell in this industry and it's all backed by facts and figures, not hype and hearsay. It's all, um, so you need to be able to recite that. That's a skill that if you can't do now, it's okay. You need to be able to develop that skill um, because if you want to get to Sapphire Elite and above and you can't do that, it's a big cross. The next skill is vision. Um, so being able to share where the company's going and where you're going. Again, people join people, so they want to see where you're going to be working in the next five years. So it's, you know, casting your own vision. 
I always look at the best leaders in this industry and if you hear them talk and you hear them tell their story and you really assess and analyse what they're saying, the best leaders in this industry are the best people at casting vision. And that's, um, you know, a skill that I think if you want to get to that full-time income and above level, you need to be able to be able to do that well. Edifying someone, that's another skill. So these are starting to get to, you know, if you were going to a job, job description <laughs> and you want to get the job, well, they're, they're mandatory. They're not, they're not um, avoidables. And uh, at Sapphire Elite level, it's not about assessing time on whether you do jeunesse or not. You just, jeunesse is sort of around what you're doing with your life and your family, you know. You'll bump into someone in an Uber on your way to a Christmas party and you'll be talking about jeunesse and how did you get involved in Uber, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's, it's not whether you're doing one thing or another. It's, it's sort of just somehow integrates into your lifestyle. So in regards to what you need to know, um, most importantly, you need to be a Jeunesse expert. So a Jeunesse expert is not someone that just knows the product, the company, the owners, the comp plan, the global platform. They need to be able to tell the story of Jeunesse, like what I was talking about, you know, from right back from how Jeunesse came about, which really started from Randy being an entrepreneur and, you know, going through a career of success to get into where he is. You know, this session's not to be, you know, educating people on that. That's something you need to go and work out yourself. But, um, but um, also those... Uh, hangouts that Scott Lewis does on a monthly basis, they are priceless for information. So I get a lot of my facts and figures on how markets are going, how many diamonds are coming on, how many countries are launching, how many products. Well, you know, a lot of it is coming through that forum. <laughs> um, you know, I'm always looking at updates from the company. Um, you know, it's... It's a uh, Jeunesse expert in lots of ways. Know when all the events are on. You know, you'll go and research when, you know, different leaders and their stories. You sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's beyond just knowing the comp plan and um, the facts and figures, etc. It's knowing pretty much everything. You know, all the apps and tools that are available, you know, everything. You're not sort of leaving an important piece of the puzzle on the table. So that's sort of the what you need to know and what you need to do if you are working with and here we're not I'm not talking to anyone here as where you're at today because I'm sure everyone here has bigger visions than Sapphire Elite. But it's giving you a bit of a framework of how you can be working with your leaders in your business and your team and how you're qualifying people. And when someone says to me, Craig, I'm not progressing, I want to progress. And, you know, I'll start going through this with them. I'll start saying, look, let's talk about your last 10 enrolments, when they were and where they come from. And often you, you find that in the last 90 days, it, there's been a bit of a dry spell. And, um, um, you know, and then if they haven't been turning up to events or, you know, that we haven't been doing regular calls, et cetera, et cetera, you know, I always revisit this type of conversation. Remember what we said at the start, I'll be able to help you achieve great success. You told me that you would like to be earning full-time income within 12 to 24 months. Did you say that? Yes, I did. Um, did I say I can help you do that? Yes, you did. Did I say that these would be what's required and if you don't do it, that's okay, we can revisit the time um, or your financial? Yes, I did. So you sort of like are using it as a bit of a coaching framework as well. Um, and we'll move on to the next zone. But importantly, uh, and this is something that is really important, <laughs> You don't do the uh, knowledge and 
effort, action, desire bit. If you're going, you're at the moment from zero to 100 cycles, you don't sort of just stop it here. You're doing the activities of whatever box that you fit you're, you're going to be in. So, um, you know, when I talk about the diamond director level, I'd already flown to the US and met the owners and looked them in the eye and before I'd enrolled a person. You know, that's what I call a diamond-based activity. Um, I hadn't even become a distributor or an executive or handed my credit card over yet to do it. Um, but I was always, you know, going to be doing diamond activities from day one. So I was touring Australia. I was enrolling, you know, good all, all the activities that you need to be doing for the big box, they were being done from day one. I didn't start doing them when I got to 100 cycles. No, I didn't then add these new skills and efforts, action, desire, and they would be done from day one. But if someone has their window or their cap set at that type of income, that's you know giving you an idea of if you're not prepared to do that and you're not prepared to learn that, you're sort of probably going to struggle to progress beyond. So with the director level, it's the knowledge side of things is Jeunesse expert, but it's simple generic personal development stuff. So it's, you know, it might be attending seminars, um, it might be reading books, it might be listening to generic audios, it might be Eric Warray stuff, you know, Aaron and I in the Getting Started training list, 10 books to watch, uh, uh, to read, et cetera, et cetera. Could be getting on that MLM nation, listening to leaders tell their stories, et cetera. Whatever it is, but it's basically developing your skills and your mindset. And, and that's important to progress to the next level because um, if you remember... Uh, I did that tr uh, that session, uh, the journey of an entrepreneur, and I was talking about the journey of success is sort of goes up, up like that, and and um, as you're going through the journey, you have peaks and troughs, and then peaks and troughs. So the first trough you fall in is usually for your own business. You'll come out of that because of your mindset and you'll get to another peak. Your second trough is because your leaders have fallen into their first trough. All right, so your mindset and your skills and your knowledge and your development when you're in that trough will be very well equipped to deal with your leaders that you're trying to work with and grow and build when they fall into the first trough. And again, it gets back to managing expectations. So this part of the equation, this um, you know, general mindset, personal growth development is just important um, because it'll help you better at answering objections. It'll help you better dealing with issues that come up as your business grows. Um, you know, when you're having a bad day, a good mindset always carries you forward, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So there's no extra genetic stuff. It's just generic mindset. In regards to um, director level uh, effort, action, desire, you're probably emerging from a, you know, a part-time person nearly in transition. It's a 15 to 30 hour gig um so you know you're sort of a hundred cycles and you're starting to go right you know i've got a good job but i see this is my future and i'm going to have you know have to readjust my time frames of how i do things because more time's going to have to go into your genes business at that level your leaders again enrollments should be uh, defaulted 80 to 100 um, so if someone's saying to me, I want to earn six figures and above residually, I'll say, well, do you think based on your current network and um, people that trust you, like you, respect you, do you think that you're capable of producing 100 personally enrolled people? Again, it's all about qualifying. Um, and we're looking for four 
to 10 litres. So if you're at 80 and you've got one person that's enrolled 30 and two pearls, you need more enrolments because you don't have four to 10 people on their journey. All right, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the people that see the vision. So four of my personally enrolled have led to 90% of my business out of 150 personally enrolled people, all right? Uh, 20 have engaged in the business, but four have found the leaders, you know, and I don't, you know, one of those team legs through Brody end up leading on my seventh level to Angela Lasenti, who went emerald. So, you know, one person ended up finding, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leaders. So it's not just four people, but important thing is you're looking at four out of 150 or the best part of 150 people. So, you know, um, that's, you know, give you a bit of an idea of um, we're talking about, you know, and I have over 100 Sapphire Elites too, so I have a lot more than four to ten people working in the business. But, um, you know, point is if you don't have four to ten people really treating this heavily seriously, as in they've all enrolled 30 people, they're all turning up to events, have already got their event tickets, they're already, you know, doing all these qualifying things that I'm talking about, Keep enrolling, keep enrolling. The trap is people go into management mode because they think they've got the team to take them there. But the reality is I only have a leader if they're doing the, the behaviours that fit into that Sapphire Elite um, box, the director box and the diamond director box. You know, a, a good example is... Uh, L uh, Salzone, who lives in Adelaide, she's come on. She's not even Sapphire yet, but she's doing direct, at least director-based activities because she's enrolling a lot. She's travelled to Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, Perth again, uh, international, you know. So she's doing director and diamond director behaviours and she's a pearl, <laughs> you know. So that's sort of giving you a bit of a, an idea of, um, you know, it doesn't matter where you fit into the equation, you're counted as that type of leader as long as you're doing those behaviours until you stop doing them. <laughs> you know, once you stop doing them, you drop out of the, I can't count you as one of the four to ten. So events um, at director level, you're started to do a bit, of national stuff so you might have a team in Perth that you say hey if you get to Sapphire I'm going to plan three months ahead and I'm going to be at that event there and we'll spend three days and we'll do two or three launches and we'll you know so you're doing a bit of national stuff that you know once you're if you ruby emerald vision um, you will potentially have a few teams sprouting up internationally and you may consider going to a market en route to a, an international convention. For example, um, Bangkok International Convention, if you had a team in Singapore and you were director level activities because you want to be earning that level and above you plan ahead now and you say right if i have four sapphires in that market and we're doing weekly calls and they're qualifying for my time mentally i'm planning on flying to singapore for three days on to um the convention in thailand and my plan is for the four leaders there to be able to drag, you know, six to ten people with them from that region there. That's how you're thinking once it's, you know, ruby and emerald type of, you know, mentality and business. Um, I, I'm not saying go and book yourself on four national tours just 
for the sake of it. <laughs> you've got to have people there first. So make sure that you've got the people to uh, work in those regions. Um, you know, Brody didn't have a team in Adelaide. Now he does, and he's been there three times in the last six weeks, you know. Angela goes to most national cities because she's got people in most national cities. You know, you go to where it makes sense, plug into the system as it is until you have the people there. But if you're talking about that as your goals, you need to think like that, all right? You're enrolling better leaders. So on this knowledge scale, you know, the same sort of thing applies. If your leadership level is a one out of 10, guaranteed the people you bring onto the business is one out of 10 because you're basically all you're saying is, hey, we've got awesome products, 30 day money back guarantee. No one's gonna join because of an amazing business opportunity. They're gonna just join on this 30 day money back guarantee. You progress up to a five and you can talk generically about Jeunesse and we've got good products, etc. You, you enroll customers and you know people that are really interested in building a business. You develop your leadership up to a six, seven, and eight. All of a sudden, you start enrolling people that are coming out of you know good corporate careers. They've got another business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you'll find as your leadership level grows, your conversions will get better, but also the quality of people that you seem to meet, um, you know, it's just the way the world works, you'll start enrolling, you know, people that are at that level. But if you all you know is that we've got youth enhancement products and there's a 30 day money back guarantee, you've got a heap of customers at best. Um, Development of leaders at that level there, you're, you're starting to produce people that are progressing beyond sapphire to 50 cycle sapphires, producing sapphires that are, you know, sapphire elite, it's just a matter of time, you know. So um, director level staff are people that are launching people's businesses, are um, helping them on a three-way call. They are... Um, you know, running team meetings and, you know, setting the example. And as a result of that example, leaders are starting to uh, grow and develop as well. And they're now doing three-way calls for their team. So in the first zone, most people are on the three-way call um, as they've invited a guest or they're, you know, they've just enrolled someone and they want to do an intro call. So they might be doing a three-way call that way. Once you're in this next zone here, and if you want to be in that zone, you need to be someone that's good enough at doing the three-way call for your leadership group. So that's giving you a bit of an idea of that um, second zone the last zone i guess is we're talking 10 out of 10 sky's the limit money can be absolutely anything considering you know anyone that's pretty much double diamond or and above is in the multi 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 million dollar residually a year income zone um but it's there's no job involved. There's no other business involved. You know, you're just full time traveling, you know, for Jeunesse and, and people, some people like fear what I do or Aaron does, or they say, look, I just don't want to do that. It's not mandatory. It's done by choice, but I'm doing the choice because I want to get from A to B a lot quicker than a lot of people. Um, I see the timing of Jess and I'm like going, I don't want to wait another five years and then go, I knew this was going to be massive and I just didn't really give it my best shot. So, you know, 26 weeks in a row the last two years and it's paid off, but don't feel that, gee, I just don't want to be on every second plane around, it's not 
it's not a requirement. It's if you look at diamonds, there's a lot of US diamonds that barely even leave America. Um, there's a lot of you know the Thai diamonds don't even that they only got their diamond off Thailand. <laughs> so it's not don't don't fear that. Probably Linda and Aaron myself travel more than any other diamond because we cover all corners of the globe. Um, but you know that's that is you're you're going to international launches you're keynote speakers of big events you've got international teams you know at that level there that's just happening you know your default is someone says craig i want to be a diamond i'll say do you think that you're capable of enrolling 150 people i want to scare someone into knowing that it's not a get rich quick scheme. I'm going to scare them into going, look, 150 people. Wow. You know, I don't even have 150 phone numbers. I don't have 150 people on Facebook, but do you really want to get to diamond? Yes, I do. We're well, going to have to enroll 150 people, which probably means you're going to have to meet a thousand. So, you know, on, on to it. <laughs> so, um, your every, every other skill that I've talked about are pretty much mandatory. There's nothing, else there like the skills that you've developed at sapphire elite um they're the skills that carry you right through once people get to sapphire elite the only reason they don't follow through or make it all the way is something's happened if you will have experienced everything possible in the business uh, probably from 50 cycle, like a consistent 50 cycle business on. It's just a matter of, you know, being that consistent, persistent person, enrolling regularly, helping people enrol. As, as I guess, you know, even at my level now, like my enrolments are probably down to two a month now because I'm always finding, you know, I've got to find new people. So my next enrolment, someone I don't know at the moment, pretty much, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's it's harder. It's harder. You need more skills. You need a lot of patience. You need to have a good follow up program. You know, everything. Um, once you've been through your war market, um, you know, requires better skills to be able to um, get the results. So the only reason people probably don't progress from a fifty cycle business beyond is just through frustration because they've done everything that needs to be done to be a diamond. Um, probably they haven't created directors at that time, which is a, you know, a challenge in its own right. But, you know, your best friends quit, your parents have quit, you, you know, you've, you've got up to 50 cycles and then you've dropped back down to 15, you know, so you, you it's, it's, uh, that's just, that's life and business. You know, when I was in the gym game, when I, I moved into this industry here, if I didn't bring, you know, 20 new clients in a month for my gym, P PT, guess what? I had 20 going out the door, so I'd, I, I'm behind. So, um, you know, when you buy shares in the share market, they don't go up 100% all the time. They go through cycles of going up and down and up and down and, progressively you know you like to see a constant trend of them going up the property market's the same um so you know just understand that in business everything goes through peaks and troughs and and that's life you know relationships peaks and troughs everything so uh you know the biggest thing is is if you've got to 50 cycles if you've got the sapphire even and you've created executives and you've enrolled people there's no other thing that you need to be doing because just enroll more people um and that's where people complicate the business and and i guess while we're on the call and probably may have gone longer than you wanted but uh, i think this is probably what you you want um and you, I'm going to have to probably do a new Moosa presentation because I'd set what I've just given you all up for my <laughs> talk. So I'll have to find some new content now. But, um, <clears throat> but you know, like this industry, $180 billion industry, and 
there's always it's good it's a good sign when you see you know new companies because that just means that um you know the industry is popular and um you know 10 years ago uh, when there wasn't as many companies there was a lot more skepticism in the marketplace because people were not hearing about new opportunities all the time whereas now everyone's getting exposed and everyone understands that this is the way you do business Um, it's just probably not the right time for them at the moment whereas when there's new companies come in you know welcome it Um, just know that statistically Jeunesse is doing incredibly well Um, if Jeunesse was you know dropped back to five hundred million dollars and there'd been an ownership split and they hadn't bought a product out for you know eighteen months and you know you start asking questions but Jeunesse has already done one point five billion this year uh, it won't keep going up and up and up but you know. Isogenics has been around for 15 years and I think last year did about 800 million. Good company, but it's growing at a slower speed. Now that's, that's okay too. So um, they're, they're doing well on their own journey. We're doing well on our own journey. Your son has been around for a long time. They're doing well on their own journey. Um, it's all, it's all positive and healthy and just know that, you know, Janice is going in, incredibly well and you've just got to make it uh, work for yourself so I think I've gone over it all so I don't know if, if uh, you want me to cover anything else or, or well, wrap it up I think that was awesome Craig I'm, I'm really grateful to you for your just for your honesty and just for being just so I guess natural with how you have explained you know just about the knowledge action effort and desire and it's the nuts and bolts that sometimes we skip over and we do overcomplicate it so it's just I really appreciate it so I don't know whether you're open to everyone ask well anyone asking questions would that be okay with you just on that for some people we use it as their coaching framework so how they qualify and mentor people some people can use it for a self-assessment a good hard honest look in the mirror yeah you know if you're not good at edifying people get good at it if you're not good at um, telling your story get good at it if you're not if you can't tell the Jeunesse story get good at it you know they're they're just basic skills I mean Joe's played high level football and if you can't mark and handball and kick you know you're not playing at the that level of football it's just they're just mandatory skills that you need to be good at and these are the skills at that at, to be good at network marketing you need to be good at these basic fundamental skills so some people might sit there and go, look, I really need to up my skills and those four things. Some people might question their commitment and say, well, you know what, I really want to be Sapphire Elite and I've got the skills to do it, but am I really committing? I've only enrolled five people, but I keep saying I want to do this. And, you know, it's, it's, it's assess, assess it for what it is. Mm. And um, it's okay if you have only enrolled five and you think you're only going to enroll another 10 in your journey, but just don't have uh, a, a um, sort of default, I should be earning this type of money. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's, yeah, take it for what it is. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that is, thank you so much. Does, has anybody got questions and then you can just unmute yourself um, if you've got any questions for Craig? Um, it's certainly, like for me, from my personal point of view, it's, it's definitely a great time of assessment and knowing where I need to sharpen skills. So um, I really appreciate just, you know, we know it, but we know that we need to, you know, fine tune things. So that's, that's awesome. Anybody else? silence in the house. I just wanted to say thanks, Craig. I really enjoyed that a whole lot. There's a lot of aha moments. But one thing I, I really took away from that is that we talked about the 80-20, and I think for myself it's really easy to get 
in your management mode and to do the enrollment. I mean, I probably enroll three to five people every month, but I haven't found a whole lot of runners. So it was encouraging to hear that tonight to keep to keep going because you just don't know where they come from. And yeah, it's just fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, and if you do, if you are a good enroller, someone that's, you know, that for you, Penny, that's been in the business for a while and in the industry for a while, if you are bringing consistent numbers, that's awesome. And it's like farming. You know, I would rather have, you know, a thousand seeds in the ground to try and grow a crop than five. Um, you know, even if your thousand seeds haven't found those four to ten people yet, you're giving yourself more chance. Mm-hmm. So you always got to think of Angela Lacenti, okay, I enrol Brody, Steve, who enrols Ellen, who enrols a customer, who enrols Angela, you know. <laughs> so it's a seven, sort of six or seven generation sort of journey. Um, but the point is a customer enrolled at Angela. So that could have happened out of one of my other, you know, 100 odd people that haven't done anything in the business. So if, if you do have lots of customers, you do have more chance of just finding those few people. So always everything gets down to quality over quantity so i would rather one diamond sitting at at the highway hotel and no one else in the room than you know a thousand customers um but you know your chances of finding those people if you can consistently bring it in your threes and fives a month that's amazing yeah your biggest problem is is when you're not bringing any in a month and you, you don't have your four to ten litres or your two to four litres, you know, it's a a pretty lonely, um, frustrating business to be involved in. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Awesome. Thanks. Has anybody else got any questions or comments for tonight? No, all good. Could could I ask one question? Sorry, I don't mean to hog or anything, but I do have a question because you talked about right at the beginning you mentioned about being executive and I can see that you know if you're an executive producing machine you're going to achieve quite a lot so in saying that even though you bring on a customer do you focus on the fact of getting a customer to bring on the on the two as well to help them become executive or just if they're a little bit more business minded straight away oh look I mean yes that's you know, the executives are building blocks of your business. If someone just wants to be a customer, um, that's okay. I don't try and force them into uh, becoming an executive because I want them to want to engage in the business. So, you know, if they're, if they're mentally framed up to being a customer, um and I'll force them into doing the business, you know, the chances are sometimes they may not want to. So it's, it's all, all gets back to your original conversation and it's respecting what they want. So if someone says to me, Craig, I just want to be a customer, I say, great, try the product for 30 days. Um, I'll be in touch just to see how you're going two weeks in or 10 days in. Then at the end of 30 days, you know, I'm ringing them up because I want them on auto, you know, making sure that they're going to follow through with their auto ship, et cetera. But at that point, if they say, look, I really love those products, they're amazing, I'll ask the question, you know, is that something you could see yourself promoting the business? Um, and if they say, oh, you know, I'm not really, I might then go and, okay, do you, do you know anyone that might be interested because I'd love to be able to share the products of lots of other people and I'll ask them for referrals. Um, so that in that situation, I'm then giving myself a chance for more personally enrolled people. But, you know, I hate seeing situations where customers become an executive and they enrol someone that wants to build the business and they've got no team support and they've got no enroller support. So um, if someone really wants to be a customer, but they do want to bring one or two people on, I just at least make them enrol everyone down their shared leg side with their sponsor. So if they drop out, they're not an executive, like they're, they've got at least 
an upline that's going to put people down that side of their business. So if someone specifically says the word to customers, that's how I deal with that situation a little bit more strategic. Um, yeah. Um, constant reviewing that situation too because, you know, sometimes it's timing and customers, you know, six months down can be great distributors. So, mm, yeah. Excellent. Good mm. response. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any, any other comments and or questions from any of you others? Yeah. <laughs> Lib. Thanks, Craig. Craig, I could listen to you all night. So many pearls of wisdom. I love it. It's been really, really good. Thank you so much, Craig. And it'd be really great to um, catch up with you a bit more often on on our team calls, because um, yeah. everyone just gets so much value and you know out of listening to you and and your you know seeing your success. It's just so great. So thank you so much once again for your time. Really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks. See you soon.